Welcome, Jawahar. We are all happy to know that India has become the sixth important economy in the world. That is, at the global level, India has acquired the sixth place in the global United economy. United Kingdom. Will that kind of a comparison is good enough? Well, the point is now: Will India beat Germany by 2027? And will it beat Japan by 2029? It is possible that India is going to beat Germany and Japan very shortly. Well, to understand what is this global scenario, we'll understand what is the contribution in the global GDP by the various superpowers. So we become now super six, now we have become super five. And what is the scenario? You understand first the which stands first is the United States with its share of about 26 trillion dollars with about 24 percent in the global GDP and China comes next with about 19 trillion dollars and the second in the say about 20 percent of the global share and third comes Japan with 4.9 trillion dollars and about 4.5 percent in the global uh, global GDP share and Germany it's about 4.5 trillion dollars. And India is currently somewhere around 3.8 trillion dollars and it is quite likely that this is possible. And is it a wish list? No, it is not a wish list. But it is based on what is happening currently. Because the world is beset with a lot of economic problem, political problem, geopolitical problem. We are all aware. COVID-19 pandemic, the disruption of the supply chain and what is the violation of the golden rule of globalization, recession, inflation and tell any problem breakage in international trade and balance everything is causing quite a lot of injury economic injury to most of the countries in the world and no country is an exception including india in that scenario what are the ways by which we think that india is going to beat germany and japan very shortly there are five points that we take into consideration number one is china slowing down of its economy the china's we are all aware the china has reached its pinnacle its growth and now it is facing a lot of problems particularly the u.s chinese trade war is going to have big impact and it will be beneficial for india to come up as a big economic power we are all aware that china faced a lot of problems because of the real estate problem and because of its close ties with Russia. Number two is Japan. Well, Japan is aging today. The Japanese average age is somewhere around 55, 60 and you have a lot of huge what you call non-working and dependable population and it's going to hit the economy very badly. Japan will require what is called a huge working force. Technical, super technical, non-technical and even ordinary people will be required. Their immigration policies must change generally. They will be able to sustain certain level of economic growth and it will not be definitely possible. The demographic disadvantage of Japan will be the demographic advantage of India. It can be possible. And the third point is Germany. The onset of winter will cause quite a lot of problems. The energy demand will increase and it is dependent on Russia for the natural gas, for its supply through Gazprom, supply through Nord Stream 1 pipeline, whereas the Russian major Gazprom is playing hide and seek and how far it is going to affect the economy, its energy needs, that's going to be seen, but it's going to have a big impact on them. And number five is well, what's happening all over the world, the major investment will be moving out of China. When they move out from China, naturally the choice will be India by default and definitely the major investment cannot be sustained in smaller economies like Bangladesh, Philippines and say Vietnam. So these are the advantages for India. Well, when India is going up towards this, there are when you know about what are the other challenges that India should proactively involve itself. Number one, make itself the manufacturing hub of the world. And number two, India should become the pharmacy of the world, manufacturing and supplying drugs, medicine and vaccine to the rest of the world. Number three, India should become the skill bank of the world where it should be able to meet the needs of these skilled people and unskilled people for any stream. And number five is the kind of the financial ecosystem that need to be sustained by the UPI and the digital transaction should be sustained to a greater level so that the digital economy of India flourishes. If these are the points available, we should see that India was earlier, it was only just 
uh, percentage of the contribution to the global GDP now it has increased to 3.5 and it's quite likely to go up to 4.5 or 4.6 but that's not going to be enough. Well with all this economic development with the growth what we today require is the most important most important thing is it should percolate down to the last percent that is most important in the growth history of India. India should re, India should not merely depend on its numbers but it should depend on the quality of the life that is being given to the people where we should work towards what is known as inclusion based on the golden principles of social justice. Hope you like this video. If you like this video please share with your friend. Do subscribe to my video. Until I meet you in the next video, this is your Jafar signing off. Bye-bye.